Film 3 on static characteristics of measurement systems. Uh, and the first two talked about the general measurement systems, the dependency from the input to the output, and the characteristic equation for a straight line, nonlinearity, and then envir environmental effects. Uh, so this will look at other effects on measurement systems that are non-ideal, really. So if you have questions, please contact me on matthias at bota.no uh, and I will try to answer. Uh, one effect uh, that is not ideal is the so-called hysteresis. Uh, that is when measurement systems behave differently when you are on the way up with the input compared to when you go down again. So you may follow different curves depending on if your input is increasing or decreasing. The example here is for with backlashing gears that uh, when when the wheel rotates from one rotating direction to the other, there is maybe a bit of slack that makes the output here the position x. Uh, not being directly linked to the angle theta. Also, you have systems that are magnetized, for example. They, uh, if you um, magnetize a lump of iron uh, and try to demagnetize it again, it will have what is called a memory, so it will behave differently on the way up and the way down. Again, the hysteresis is, is uh, often given uh, as a percent of full-scale deflection. So, uh, you look at it, uh, at it uh, with respect to the output span, and then you make it into percent. Uh, so, uh, you see here, the hysteresis curve, you usually don't uh, define the, uh, give the, the equation for the hysteresis in the data sheet of the system, but you give this maximum hysteresis. Resolution, uh, oplösning in Norwegian, it's especially for digital systems where you have that the output goes in steps. So if the input increases on a linear scale, the output increases in steps. So for digital systems, you can think that each of these steps represent an integer number, and you cannot step uh, in smaller steps than an integer number. Heltal uh, ponorsk. Also here, you, the example here is where you have a. a a coil of wires and you measure the resistance in the entire coil, you see that a contact point here is actually jumping from one turn to the next in steps. So resolution is defined as the, the largest input you can do without a change in the output. So here is delta IR input resolution. You can actually go from here, to, from this dotted line, all the way to here, this dotted line, without a change in the output. Ideally, this I delta, delta IR should be as small as possible. That would mean that you have a high resolution, you have a lot of steps on the way up here, so the line becomes almost as a continuous line without the steps, if the steps are small enough. Wear and aging, uh, that is also a part uh, of the input-output relation for, for a measurement system. Here you have a brand new spring compared to an old one, and uh, I guess you if you you can imagine that if I put a mass on top here, let's say that I put five kilograms here and five kilograms on this old spring, the old spring would compress more than this brand new one. So things change with time. 
and that also is a part of the input output relation it's really really difficult to try to find exact numbers for this wear and aging so therefore in many cases we define all these small deviations from the ideal straight line we define into one large uh, error or deviation that is called the error band so you say that the output is you should follow this line the the the, the, the whole uh, line here and but your true output input relation is somewhere between the two dotted lines so the the distance between the dotted lines is called the error band so you have the true relation here as a filled line and then the error band which is up and down from from there so in many data sheets they uh, they give the number for the error band and it's all often called the tolerance of the instrument so you say for example that the that the output or input relation is um, uh, like uh, the output is five times the input plus minus one percent for example or the output range is from uh, zero to hundred bars plus minus point one percent or something like that so that is the error margin which is really a result of many of these small errors that we find uh, in systems so to sum it all up you have here the uh, the uh, dynamic response which is when the system settles and then it settles and you have the so-called steady steady state or static response plus minus the error band shown here so it's somewhere in between here uh, and uh, if you sum this up you have the true input the thing that you really want to measure and you have k here and a that is this, the original straight line equation for the input output relation input times k plus that a gives the output but then you have the nonlinearity as well which is a function of the input you also have the input multiplied by km which again is multiplied by im so all those that one and these two boxes here they are the modifying environmental effects and then you have the bias here which has nothing to do with input really it is a number that is independent of the input and so is the interfering um, environmental effect that is also independent of the input so but it, it it adds to the system response as a whole and then you have your output this is the static output this is the output you talk about here but then you have an equation describing how is your deny dynamic response how does these waves how much overshoot do you have how much undershoot do you have how long will these waves go on for before we can read the data if you want to describe that that is done by a uh, dynamic equation also called the transfer function and then you get the true output and you now you get the output at any moment of time if you're interested in that but in 99 and a half percent of the cases you're really only interested in the output here so you you apply your input and you wait for a given time say a second or two and then you do your measurements instead of trying to understand how the dynamic response is